Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Michi Makes Up. Today we're gonna take a look at the new Dior Birds of a Feather collection. In this collection, there are two eyeshadow palettes, two quints, uh, two blushes, three nail lacquers, and three uh, lip liners or lip pencils. I did not get any of the lip pencils or uh, nail lacquers, but I did pick up both of the quince and both of the blushes. I am wearing um, one of the blushes and one of the quince today. I did include a, or I will be including a demo of how I put together this look um, at the end of the video, but we will definitely come back and do a dedicated video to the other quint and blush that I didn't get around today. And per usual, we will swatch everything and then I'll look for comparisons in my collection to show you guys uh, if there's anything I can find that is similar. So let me show you the quints. This is Early Bird and this is Night Bird. I have Early Bird on. I think it's really beautiful. Talk more about Early Bird a little bit later. And then for the blushes, This is Coral Flight, and this is Nude Glide. Nude Glide is what I have on my cheeks. A little bit more about these palettes and blushes. The palettes, the eyeshadows, are made in Italy with a shelf life of six months, and the blushes are made in France with a shelf life of 12 months. And the description for this fall collection briefly reads on the website as, Peter Phillips, creative and image director of Dior Makeup, explores new color combinations and effects for this new fall collection. His imagination was filled with images of spectacular birds and their plumage with iridescent tones. So everything in this collection, except for those lip pencils or lip crayons, are limited edition. And it's always a bit hard to say when something is going to sell out with Dior. Uh, there are instances of where quints that are limited edition did sell out pretty quickly within a month or two. Um, I think the Dune collection, so part of their summer uh, collection from a couple of months ago, the highlighters were sold out very quickly. I think it came back in stock once more and then sold out. So it's really hard to say. But one thing, just my gut feeling, is that this collection, Birds of a Feather, is probably their best collection so far this year. So I wouldn't be surprised if a couple of things go out of stock quickly. It also is dependent upon how much they've produced as well. So it's hard to say. I think my suggestion is if you see something you really, really like that that grabbed your attention, you keep thinking about it, I wouldn't hesitate to get it just in case because I hesitated with the Dune um, highlighters and I kept waiting and waiting and waiting until it was sold out and then it came back in stock and I grabbed one thinking, well, I'm gonna get one and I'll see what that's like. Well, by the time I you know, went back to hopefully get the other one, it was like gone, gone for good. You can't even find traces of like landing pages for those products on the website anymore. So they're gone for good. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendation. If something is truly just of utmost interest to you, um, I would go ahead and get it. The rest you can probably wait and see what happens. So anyways, let's move on to the swatches. I'm gonna start with New Glide. And New Glide has a kind of, a bit of a sheen and a shimmering finish. Um, there are gold specks uh, in the formulation. And looks beautiful to me, um, very easy to wear. It does add radiance because again of the sparkles. And then Coral Flight, you might not be able to see it on camera, but Coral Flight also has shimmering specks as well. And also the embossing for both of these blushes. You can see the plumage like feather. It's so pretty, so, so pretty. These blushes feel both creamy and silky at the same time. And I look forward to trying Coral Flight, um, putting on my cheeks in another video. Then I'm moving on to Daybird. These are the four shades, as you can see, and I'll swatch this one too, but these three are shimmery, and this one here is like a satin matte. And it looks like the satin matte 
you know, at least on my skin tone, blends right in. However, the way that I use that um, satin matte shade was to buff out any seams in my look and I thought it worked really well because as you can see, it's barely visible on my skin so I think it works really well to blend out anything. If you have fair skin, um, I'm sure it's a shade that you might be able to wear like all over your lid and add some shimmer on it and you could be done with just that. But for me, it's definitely more of a buffing shade. And for the deepest shade of the Quint, we have that deep purple. As you can see, four out of the five shades are all glittery and shimmery. Um, the look that I have on today does remind me of some looks I've created in the past with Pat McGrath. The intensity of these shimmers is not the same as Pat McGrath, but it has that vibe. I feel like this is a Dior's take on a very glittery, shimmery look. What's interesting too about this collection, especially these two quints, is that uh, I believe they had planned to release this last fall, but perhaps due to production challenges because of everything that had been going on, they had to postpone this. And um, I believe I've read that information on Tavia's Instagram. I'll have a link below, but she shares a lot of you know, new makeup releases and actually really, really early previews uh, of makeup from, you know, a number of brands, a number of luxury brands. So I believe that's what I've read from, uh, from her Instagram. So I thought that was interesting that we like almost a year later, we're seeing it now, uh, but I'm glad. I'm glad it didn't get canceled. I'm glad they decided to release it, launch it anyway. And then this is Nightbird, four of the five shades. I have a dress that I feel like is a cross between Daybird and Nightbird. I might try to wear it in my Nightbird video. And then the fifth shade here is this bright highlighter shade. All the shades on Nightbird are shimmery. Some are more glittery than others, and some have a more creamy metallic feel. So I think some shades are going to be maybe more suitable as toppers, while others, um, you might wanna use it all over your lid. One thing to note with Nightbird is that because these are deeper shades all around the center, kind of corally, pink corally shade, um, there's gonna be some kick up and it's gonna flow like it's gonna go over to the center shade. So just FYI, I think as a result of that, it can get dirty easily. I mean, I already see some of it here. So, but very, very beautiful. And um, somebody had asked me, one of you guys have asked me, you know, what is the quality of Nightbird? You were wondering about that. So I can say with just the swatches, I think you get a lot of pigmentation as expected from Pat McGrath. Unlike the Dune collection, um, everything on Nightbird and um, I guess Daybird too, all of it is, it's not as shimmery. And so it's pigmented and not as shimmery, but it still has that, you know, very glistening, shimmery wow factor to it that makes it that kind of special collection. Uh, and I really don't have any concerns with it showing up too lightly on your lids. Like Dune was actually very light, um, but I think you're gonna get a lot more pigment and a lot more wow factor um, with both of these palettes, uh, including Nightbird. So I said I would include the demo of this at the very end, but I'm actually gonna put the demo right here uh, at this portion of the video. When the demo is finished, we'll come back and do those comparisons. I'm taking this shade here and placing that on the crease. Then I'm taking this deep shade here and putting that all over the lids. And I'm going to extend this purple further past the outer corners. Then I'm using the Blender Pro by Sonia G to buff out that deep purple shade and blending it into the crease. Taking the shade here, 
I'm going to add some of that onto just kind of the center of the lid, but avoiding the space right above the lash line. And I'm going to lightly sweep the shade, diffusing it just upwards. I'm looking for more intensity right above the lash line, so I'm gonna go back into this deep purple shade to deepen everything up. And then tapping into this shade here, I'm going to start in the outer corners and blend that into the crease. I'm going to repeat everything on the left side, put on some concealer foundation, set all of that, and we'll come back for under the eyes. For under the eyes, I'm going to go back into this shade here, and I'm just adding some of that on the lower lash line. And then going in with my finger, I'm actually taking the center shade here and putting that onto the inner corners. For blush, I'm going to take New Glide, and that's what we're going to go with today. Very pigmented. I didn't go in very hard. Normal pressure, quite a bit of kick up. Let me dab some of this off. I don't think I need that much. Okay. That looks nice, it goes well with the um, eyeshadows. And then for highlight, I'm going to use Pink Glow, which is the uh, new Dior Luminizer. For lips, I'm going to use Lisa Eldridge's Kitten Mischief. And this is the finished look. And you guys might find it strange that in the demo I was wearing something completely different than what I have on. Uh, the reason is I filmed the demo portion before I head out uh, for dinner tonight. And um, at dinner I got a stain on my dress, like yes, this white dress that I normally don't wear and the one time I wear it I got something on it. So I had to treat it when I came back home and so that's why I have this top on. Um, but the makeup I have on right now, uh, it's been four and a half hours and I did do some light touch-ups. So I blotted some oil from, you know, T-Zone, Cheeks 2, and then I did deepen um, the, the shade I used for the lower lash line. So this shade right here. Uh, also touched up on the lips, but I didn't do anything to the upper lids. And you can see there's no creasing. The colors are, you know, on and they didn't move around. As well, that um, the shades stayed vibrant. So I think in terms of quality, no concerns there. I feel like Nightbird's going to be the same. We'll see. We'll confirm that once I get to try it. But definitely Daybird, no quality concerns. And um, yeah, overall, I'm quite impressed with how everything stayed on, how it looks. You know, it's still a very pretty look, suitable for, definitely suitable for evening. So for comparisons, I did take out denim from Dior because these two bottom shades here, they're not the same, but it kind of has that blue-green vibe, especially with this shade here. So I'm going to swatch these two for comparison. I don't expect them to be the same, but we might find something interesting. These two um, metallic shades are a lot less shimmery than these, as you can see. And in terms of shades, really not that similar. This is also much more pigmented in comparison. These are lighter. 
And then when it comes to formulation and finish, I do think that the um, Birds of the Feather Quint may be the same in finish as the Golden Knights collection from um, Holiday of last year. So I'll just swatch a few shades, two to start about. I'm going to swatch on my wrist. You can see that the finish, how glittery it is, definitely is very similar to these shades. And they're just as pigmented, but the finish of them, that like golden glitter as part of, you know, a winter holiday collection is definitely very much present. So yeah, I think they're most similar to the Golden Knights in terms of finish um, with this new fall collection. And earlier I mentioned how the look that I have using Early Bird reminds me of looks I've created in the past with a Pemograph palette. So I have here Bronze Seduction. Blitz Flame is probably the red I was thinking of. So I'll just swatch and compare. So this is um, from Early Bird and I'll just swatch it right here. They're quite similar. I think Dior is less pigmented and more glittery. This is definitely more metallic and uh, a lot more, I mean, it's kind of crimson-like. Whereas this has a hint of orange in it. This is more like tropical red. Yes, I think maybe colors you'd find on a tropical bird. Whereas this is spicier. That's the vibe I'm getting from it. And then from Midnight Sun, I am interested in Blitz Violet Orchid. And I do not think it's gonna be, you know, similar to this shade, but we're here anyways. And you can see that Blitz Violet Orchid is very shimmery and glittery in finish. Um, Shade-wise, not even close but because of how glittery it is, it does remind me of those other glitter heavy shades from this collection. Um, the main difference that I see from, you know, Pat McGrath compared to Dior is, uh, Pat McGrath is a lot more intense. So for the same type of shimmer glittery shade, um, all Pat McGrath shadows are going to be more pigmented or generally it's more pigmented. Uh, whereas the Dior is like a little bit more subdued and even the level of shimmer and glitter might be a bit more subdued in comparison. And then finally, I do wanna take out a blush that reminds me of Nude Glide. So this is from Pat McGrath's Divine Blush Collection and this is in the shade Flautatious, also that embossing, so beautiful. We can see just from this that they're not the same, but they're pretty similar, the kind of nude mauve tone and that means I gotta do a swatch comparison. This is Nude Glide, and I'm going to put Flotatious right above it. I think Flotatious is cooler and more pink in comparison. Yes, definitely cooler and more pink. Um, this is also satin in finish, and there's no glitter to it. I think it does perhaps enhance your radiance, but it, you know, there's no really like shimmer or it's like the slightest sheen. Whereas you really see that golden glitter here. Uh, it's not too, it's not too much. So it doesn't, it doesn't make you kind of light up for no reason. Like you don't intend to light up from a blush. I think it just adds a nice amount of radiance um, to your cheeks. So there you have it. That is my initial review of Dior's Birds of a Feather collection for this fall. And very soon here, I will come back with another video where I use Nightbird and Coral Flight. I think this is gonna be another fun look to do. Um, I just don't have any blushes as bright and as orange as Coral Flight. So I didn't take out any of anything from my collection to compare. Um, I'll definitely look around once more before I film that video to see, cause I don't want to miss anything. But yeah, I look forward to these. Let me know below what you think of this collection so far. And if you're new to the channel, welcome, good to have you. Um, subscribe, like this video, and ring the bell to get notified every time new content is released. I review a lot of luxury makeup, occasionally luxury skincare, and luxury makeup brushes. 
Thank you guys for watching. Hope your weekend has gone well. See you soon. Bye.